Over the past 48 hours, two separate people sent me messages asking me to talk about bond yields inverting. And ironically enough, it's bonds. You don't have to ask me twice. Thanks for the links. Apparently the stressed looking trader has become the poster child for this story. As you can tell, I'm pretty excited that I can talk bond yields without risking not getting invited to the next party. Now, for some of you, bond yields sounds like two boring words that become exponentially even more boring when combined. I mean, what is a bond anyways? That thing your granddad bought you for your birthday when you explicitly asked for an Xbox? Don't worry, no lingering resentment there, gramps. Well, a bond is essentially all of the government debt people keep complaining about. Every time the taxes can't pay for everything that they promise people, they turn around and start selling IOUs to the highest bidders. So why would someone buy an IOU from the government? Well, sometimes it's because of a huge marketing campaign that probably put the government even deeper into debt. More often though, it's because the US government has never defaulted on its IOUs. So you're probably going to get your money back. And more importantly, the government always pays interest on its debt, also known as a yield. Oh man, things are starting to come together early in this episode. So what happened this week? Well, here's a guy who seems even more excited than I am to talk about bond yields. An inverted yield curve is going to have a complexion like that. Basically, this is going to be your maturities from three months out to 30 year, full inversion. These are yields. So, of course, as you go down into the maturity range to longer term, yields go down. Whoa, whoa, whoa. This just jumped right into a 200 level glass. Unfortunately for me, I paid well, a college amount of money to take a money in banking class. And I'm about to lay out maybe the only thing I remember from it. So the yield. The amount of interest the government gives you for lending them money. It can change. If a ton of investors want to loan the government money, what well, then the government can say, all right, well, we're not going to pay you very much interest on this. On the other hand, if everybody's saying, yeah, we don't want bonds right now, I'm going to roll the dice, buy some stocks, and make some risky investments. Well, then the government's going to have to pay quite the premium to get the money they need to balance the budget for that fiscal year. As Investopedia says, treasury bond purchase prices are determined by the supply and demand for treasury debt. Prices are bid up when there are more buyers in the market. For the purposes of what we're talking about today though, the more bidders in the market, the lower the yield on bonds. All right, so this brings us to the core question. Why does the fact that interest rates on long-term bonds being lower than those on short-term bonds lead people to think a recession is coming? Well, if we were playing a game of marry, screw, kill with financial investments, you marry a government bond, you screw a stock, and you kill, I don't know, probably the exciting opportunity to be a Herbalife affiliate. Anyways, when investors think that the economy is going to grow, it's a fun time to fool around and take some risks. You know, buy some stocks, maybe a house. When investors think that, I don't really think the future looks that great, well, then they start putting their money into long-term government bonds. You know, settle down for the long haul. This country isn't declaring bankruptcy anytime soon, so you're good to go. So why do people think that this is going to lead to a recession? Well, the first point to make is that is not the correct way to look at this problem. And the mistake that I think people make is that they think that a recession, that an inverted curve causes something, but you need to think of it a different way. You need to say, what is causing the inversion? The whole issue here is that the US government bond market sounded alarms as investors fleeing riskier assets drove the 30 year yield to a record low. This won't trigger a recession, you gotta kind of think about it the same way as a movie you like getting certified rotten on Rotten Tomatoes. It's not going to affect the actual movie's quality itself, it just means that depending on how much you trust the critics, well you might not want to invest in a ticket right now. Of course, this isn't bad for everybody as if you look at our 2020 federal budget, well, we're going to need the lowest interest rates American can get. 
So that's why interest rates are low for government debt. Investors don't want to take risks right now. Unfortunately, that only answers half of the question we're asking. Because when interest rates are low, that's not an inversion. That's just a really good time for the government to take on some additional debt. An inversion happens when the interest rates for long term loans actually drop below the interest rate for short term loans, meaning that people are demanding long term loans at much higher rates. This is odd because it means that you're actually sacrificing access to your money for a longer period of time, while at the same time earning less per month on your loan than you would have if you put that money up for a shorter period. Now I realize that's a mind melting sentence, so let me break it down. Basically, it would be like if my friend gave me two options. Give me five bucks now and I'll give you a dollar a day until the end of the week when I give you your five bucks back. Or, and hear me out on this one, you give me five bucks today and I give you 50 cents a day and give you that five bucks at the end of a month from now. You would probably go for the first option because you can always just reloan that money at the end of the week. Trust me, the government's not going to stop asking for money anytime soon. In this case though, investors weren't biting. Why? Well, you'd be surprised how few people are actually asking that question. The answer is a slight tweak on that question I just asked, with your friend offering you two loan opportunities. A buck a day and then five bucks being returned to you at the end of the week, or fifty cents a day with the five bucks being returned to you at the end of the month. Clearly, you just want to keep loaning that five dollars on a weekly plan. Unless, of course, you expected that a lot more people are about to start flooding that bond market, driving all of the rates down. Then you would want to lock in that interest rate for the longest period you could and ride it out. Now, this is exactly what's causing the inversion right now. With everybody scrambling to lock in their higher interest rates for longer periods, well, the government can hand out its IOUs on much better terms. And this means that longer term rates are going down faster than shorter term rates. Now, Before I go, there's one final piece to this puzzle that reveals a lot. Last week. Now that might sound weird, but take this coverage of the Treasury's auction for 10 year bonds that happened on August 7th. There's no way this auction was going to go well, and it didn't go well. 27 billion, first offering. We usually have two reopenings thereafter. Uh, 27 billion, 10 years. 1.67 was the Dutch auction yield. Yeah, nobody wanted them. As Bloomberg reported, what's telling is that Wednesday's auction of $27 billion in 10 year notes by the US government was a dud. Which wasn't what one would have expected if bond traders really thought a meltdown was at hand. So that's odd. It's almost like Wall Street traders haven't yet achieved clairvoyance. What happened there? Well, we're not really sure. And then people started saying, wow, that really failed. It's really going to put a spotlight on the government sale tomorrow, Thursday, of $19 billion in 30 year bonds. That'll show what Wall Street thinks of the economy. And I think you know where I'm going with this one. Although, nope, because investor demand for $19 billion in the latest 30 year bonds on Thursday turned out softer than expected. I mean, look at that title from last week. US bond yields rise as Wall Street rebounds. This all happened after the threat of a currency war and all of the crazy economic trade war activity that happened recently. The biggest difference between today and last week is people want bonds now. Over the past year, interest rates have overall been trending downwards, so demand is up. But as one reporter put it, I think if you're a trader, you're just following, you're following the wave. It goes up, it goes down, and you go with it. If you talk to lenders, if you talk to people across the country, the economy is doing okay. You look at the economic statistics this morning, the economy is doing okay. doesn't describe what's going on in the market, so we're pretty much ignoring the fundamental data and just watching headlines and following technical levels like can 2% hold on the 30-year treasury note. I'll take exactly how someone would describe a bubble for 500, Alex. The issue really only started three days ago, with people saying bad European and Chinese data were the trigger for the global bond rally. Now, I don't have a crystal ball, and I'm not going to pretend to be better than a guy who's dedicated his life to watching the markets, but I will say this. 
Sometimes in economics, the biggest thing to fear is fear itself. Thank you and that's all I have to say about that. Hello YouTube! If you want to support independent, nonpartisan news, remember to subscribe by clicking on this floating logo to the right of my head. Ring that bell so that freedom will continue to ring and give me a thumbs up if you like what you saw. Lastly, as always, thank you for watching!